Well, hello there. Welcome back to Creative Mojo Cards Collaboration by Sasebo. Yay! <clears throat> so this card is Dreams. Dreams are illustrated from the book Your Soul is Writing About by Marsha Norman. Too cool. Dreams can be very powerful sometimes. Have you ever had one that you cannot or will not forget? Do a little piece inspired by that dream. It does not have to be anything specific. It can be abstract or it can be summed up in a few words. You will know what it is about and that is what really matters. So here we go, guys. These are all the uh, supplies I'm gonna use. So I got my paintbrush jar, my paint color palette, even though that's a lot of colors, not sure. And then I got these neat, these are really neat, and they are graphite paint, so it's kind of gritty, but I don't know, they work out really good, especially for dramatic, like, landscapes and stuff. And of course, this is a collaboration by Sabibo, S sorry, Sasebo, and I'm excited to continue this collaboration. It has really um, pushed my creativity farther than I thought, so let me clear this up and we'll get started all right so I did a little preliminary of this dream that I wanted to put down and I'm using my sketchbook because I have this great sketchbook that I really need to start using and I practiced some colors on it so this paint does pretty well in this sketchbook because it's really for like alcohol markers so but it works pretty well. Anyway, so dreams. This was an exciting but intimidating one for me because I have some pretty cool dreams from time to time. And I had a hard time choosing which dream I wanted to, to kind of put down on paper. And so I will tell you about it as I'm working on it. It's hard for me to kind of talk while I'm painting. We'll see how this goes. This is going to be just straight out whatever happens happens it may turn out great it may turn out wrong it doesn't matter we're just gonna do it and I'm just I was gonna start sketching a few things but I think I'm gonna do some um, background color first so as I'm doing this which is probably good for me to talk then I won't think about it too much but we'll see <laughs> so I have this it's um, it's a sumi brush something that you use it's Windsor, Windsor Newton. It's kind of scraggly, puts down paint pretty messy. So I'm gonna start doing the background and then I'll start telling you about my dream. So again, I had a few dreams that have always stuck with me, a couple of them. Well, the first one was when I was younger and another one when I was like, I don't know, in my 30s maybe. But I decided to do this dream that I had the other day. And, and I normally don't have, some people may call it prophetic dreams. I'm not really sure, but it went something <clears throat> like this. So in my dream, I'm in the car with my husband and we're in a big city. Now we do live in the country, but for some of whatever reason, we were in the city on this highway. And all of a sudden the traffic stops and we get out of our car and we look under the bridge and there's military units uh, and military vehicles with soldiers marching or in formation down below. And I was telling my husband in my dream, I'm like, see, I told you, see, I told you, whatever that means. So then my dream jumps back to me sitting on my steps. And normally I sit on the steps while the dogs go out to the toilet and I'm sitting on my steps and I see these footprints along our driveway and in our grass and it was <clears throat> not winter per se but it was definitely not summer because the grass was brown and <clears throat> there was a little bit of snow but not much so I guess it was winter and I'm like what who's on our property like what is going on because we have our property has fence all around it and we have a gate 
Just an old farm gate, guys. It's not a fancy electronic gate or anything. Just to keep our animals in from getting out onto the road. So I'm wondering, I'm like, <clears throat> who's on our property? What's going on? And I'm like, boys, go see. So as you may or may not know, I have three Boston Terriers. And the only puppy that went was my big gray dog, my bigger Boston, Rolo. You may have seen him in the videos. But he goes, runs to the right of the house, and I don't hear him dart, bark because he's one of our good, well, they're all good watchdogs per se. But he doesn't bark, he doesn't growl, and I'm like, hmm. So I get up off the step, I'll go walk over, and Roscoe, or excuse me, Rolo, is greeted by this lovely looking man with light colored hair, you know, kind of business casual clothing, and he is just petting Rolo. And Rolo is friendly to an extent, but anybody new he will not really go up to. So I thought it was strange in my dream that he had trusted this person. So I was like, oh, hey. And then all of a sudden I see this pavilion. So like people under like a, I don't know what you call it. It's just a, like a tent pavilion type of thing. And there's people sitting there at tables, eating, drinking, talking. And then I look to my right and this man that just looks very, um, I don't know. It, I'll tell you in a minute. I didn't quite realize who he was in my dream, but he looks pretty, I want to say ethereal, ethereal, kind of like spiritual. <clears throat> and you know those islands that you have in your kitchen, the fancy kitchens that have those long islands? He was behind the island and he had a bag of pasta and he was cooking. And I was like, oh, what are you cooking? Do you want me to help you? And he goes, no, I want you to sit down. I'm preparing a feast for you. And then I snapped and I was like, oh, that's Jesus. Jesus is preparing a feast for us. So I go over to the pavilion where people are eating and drinking and talking and I'm talking and I know a lot of people. And what's interesting is I saw my husband, he wasn't eating or drinking, but he was sitting over to the left <clears throat> next to a white Porsche 911 because that's like one of his favorite cars. And he was just sitting there with his hat on, just all happy. And um, I don't know if you guys know what hurling is. It's a sport they play in Ireland. If you don't know, my husband's from Ireland. So I grabbed the hurling stick and I'm like, hey, do you want this hurling stick? And he was like, oh. But anyway, that's really what the dream was. And I just thought it was so significant because, well, for many reasons, if you don't know by now, um, I'm a Christian and I believe in Jesus and all that. And so for me, this dream was the wedding feast, the feast that Jesus is preparing for us when we go home, the final final celebration. So I felt like this was an important dream. Now I am in no way a prophet or anything like that, but it really, I just really in my heart felt like I needed to put this dream down and let you guys all know about it. Now, whatever your faith or your beliefs are, I'm not here to preach. That's not what my channel is about, but at least you guys know where I stand in my faith walk. And, um, you know, that's all I'm going to say about that. And I love you guys. And I hope maybe this might inspire you to um, think about your faith and the times we're living in. So that's all I'm going to say about that. So I'm going to try and attempt to draw out a little bit of the scene. We'll see how this goes. I'm pretty happy with the background. I'm going to let this dry and I'll be right back. Okay, it's dry. I thought before we go on, I better do my due diligence. If you guys are curious and you want to know some verses in the Bible that talk about the wedding feast, the marriage feast, 
<clears throat> when Jesus comes back to collect his people, which in the Bible it says his bride, we are his bride, we are his church. Here are some verses that I looked up for you. And I always encourage you guys to test the spirit, um, pray about it, and see what the Lord tells you. But there you go, guys. So, so what I thought I'd do now is try and sketch out a little bit. I wanted to put Jesus over here with Rolo, the footprints, and maybe the table or the pavilion thing over here. We'll see how it goes. I hope I don't mess it up, but we're going to go with it because it's, you know, this is what we do as artists, right? So I'm just going to loosely sketch with my pencil here very loosely. You may not be able to see it. And then I think, eh. you know what, guys, hold on. I'm going to get some um, charcoal. It'll go easier on the pages. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. Get some charcoal. If you guys have ever drawn with charcoal, it's pretty fun. It's loose, pretty forgiving. It just depends on how messy or you want to be with your art. So, my little charcoal sticks from that haven't been opened yet. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Just gonna break this in half because I don't need it. Oh, it doesn't break in half. Oh well, we will just be loose. Loose, 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 loose with the drawings. And we can kind of get and <laughs> It's been a while since I've drawn people, but we'll just go with it, right? Let's see, here's Rolo jumping up. Let's see if I can get his little nose. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we'll do. Let's see, pause body, his little taily. Oh, now he's too short. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. Uh, anyway, we can just, anyway, we'll just work on that. And then I kind of wanted to do some footprints. Although, do you guys ever remember hearing the poem footprints in the sand or something? Just, we'll just be very...
Okay, friends, I fiddled it with uh, this part a little bit. I like it a lot better. Um, this stuff is amazing, the graphite paint pan, and it really helped kind of tighten up some of my misdrawing or little line marks that I didn't like. I was trying to define Rolo a little bit better with the gray, but, you know, looks better than it was before. Did some more to the foreground. Got some rays going on Jesus, of course. And I think the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this a little bit, the sky, and probably call it good. Because the more I fiddle with it, <clears throat> uh, with anything else, I suppose, more likely I won't like it. So let's just do the last part of this drawing in this card. Let's play with the sky and see if we can make it dramatic. So I'm going to use my big brushy here. Let's add some lilac to the sky. Don't know if it'll help, but we can give it some light. Probably too much water here. Let's do some pinks, shall we? And then we can go in with some darks afterwards. Let's see. I know that's kind of dramatic. We'll water that down a little bit. Oh, we probably should define this tent thing, pavilion thing, whatever. <laughs> Let's do some more pinks to the sky. And maybe have some pinks coming in over here a little bit. My puppies are so cute. They're cleaning each other. Sorry for the licky noises. I might get on some people's nerves there, but. I'm so used to it. I don't really hear it much. Okay. Um, maybe do a little bit more yellow. Just to blend that in a little bit with pink. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Let's try to button up this part a little bit and add some dramatic more to the sky. We can do some deep gray blue, use a smaller brush. Maybe, don't know, Let's see what happens. Okay, that works. Right. Let's do maybe some indigo for this tent pavilion thing. Mm -hmm. Don't know. That's really gonna. Let's bring in this. Do some pop of moon. Put just this color here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Really liking these pinks. They just go on so nice. The pigment is really cool. And maybe let's try this ocean blue over here. Maybe fix this part up a little bit. Maybe try and get 
get some of that purple that was a little sloppy. All right, guys, I think I'm going to leave alone. I think that's all I'm going to do. And like anything else, I can always come back to it and add more. But for the sake of this video, I'm not sure how long it is. But thank you for if you've, gosh, if you have watched all the way through, thank you. You've got a heart like a lion. Let's go ahead and pick the next card. All right, guys, I'm going to move this off to the side. All right, so the next card challenge, guys. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Any guesses? I think that'll be fine. Just go. And here we go. All right. Everything begins with an idea. Earl Nightingale. Have you ever made a list of ideas for your projects that you would like to try one day? If not, make that list now. Pick one idea and start creating. Very good. All right, guys. I will see you in the next video. You have a wonderful day. And I'll see you soon. Thank you.